What's up LEGO fans, it's LEGO Man Cam, and today we're going to be looking at some of the most forgettable LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. The reason why these sets are forgettable are all pretty different, and you probably won't even know a lot of these sets existed, unless you're a true LEGO Star Wars fan. Anyway, first up from The Force Awakens and 2017, we have set 75178, the Quad Jumper. Now there's a few reasons why this set is so forgettable. Firstly, there are no exclusive minifigures to this set. You just get a regular Rey, Finn and BB-8 who all appear multiple times in many other sets. You then get a First Order Stormtrooper with the vest on, who's the same one from the battle pack, and an Unkar's Brute who actually appeared in a book as well and the figure is really ugly anyway. The second reason this set is so forgettable is that it released in late 2017, which is almost two years after the initial release of The Force Awakens, and just as everyone was getting ready and preparing for The Last Jedi. And the last reason this set is so forgettable is that it had about five seconds of screen time in the movie before it gets completely obliterated and blown up. So that's why actually not only the set, but the ship itself is really unrecognizable. The next set is one that I actually really like, but one that released at a really weird time and just seems so out of place. This is Anakin's custom Jedi Starfighter from 2015. This is actually a really amazing set with an incredible Asajj Ventress minifigure based on her appearance from the original Clone Wars animated series. The ship itself isn't just a regular Jedi Starfighter either. It's got modifications to it, which I guess explains the custom in the name. I think the set just got a bit lost between all of the hype before The Force Awakens as well as after Star Wars Rebels had just come out, so 2015 was a really weird time to have a throwback set to the original Clone Wars animated series. Anyway, this is still a really awesome set and I'd love to pick it up today just if it wasn't worth $250. Now we have a Star Wars Rebels set, which I think is pretty forgettable, other than one single piece that came in it. This is set 75106, the Imperial Assault Carrier. The set retailed for $130 back in 2015 and came with six minifigures, with the only exclusive figure having only one exclusive piece, which was Sabine Wren's helmet. This piece alone makes her figure sell for over $100. Other than that though, the set was just pretty lackluster. The assault carrier itself looks pretty blocky towards the front, and the giant hole to accommodate the handle doesn't make it look great either. Similar to Moff Gideon's light cruiser, the set features miniature TIE fighters that can be deployed from the bottom of the ship, and just goes to show you exactly how small scale this set actually is. Overall, this set isn't the most forgettable set on the list, but another one that has flown under the radar, while still slowly picking up value, which is why it's now worth double its RRP today. Here's the most forgotten UCS set of all time, and one that's probably also one of the smallest UCS sets of all time. This is Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter from 2010. This is only a 676 piece UCS set, which seems so small these days, and it's a much smaller scale than almost every other UCS set ever. Anyway, this is so forgettable that I actually literally forgot it existed until the other day before I started researching sets for this video. In an earlier video, I even said that the UCS gunship was the first UCS prequel set because I literally forgot this one existed. Now we have a rendition of a pretty classic Star Wars ship, although this one from 2017 has completely gone under the radar, despite having a really sought after minifigure in it. This is the Return of the Jedi A-Wing, and this set includes three minifigures, a Rebel Technician, an A-Wing pilot, and most of all, Lando Calrissian in his Return of the Jedi outfit. What makes this set so forgettable is again, the fact that it came out at a really strange time for LEGO Star Wars, sandwiched between two big movie releases and it never really got a chance to shine. Plus the set was also $40, which is kind of a lot when you consider the Resistance A-Wing, which came out just two years later, cost $10 less than this one. The next set is from the really forgettable Star Wars TV show called Star Wars Resistance. LEGO made two sets from this TV show, with the first being Major Von Reg's TIE Fighter, which I don't think is a forgettable set, because the set looks so amazing. The striking red colour scheme looks really nice, and the minifigure selection is awesome, but especially with Major Von Reg themselves. But it's actually the other set from the line that is forgettable, and this is the Black Ace TIE Interceptor, which actually has a pretty interesting looking design. Now, I haven't seen anyone talk about this set in a really long time, considering it was released five years ago, and it's only gone up in value by a really, really tiny amount. The set originally retailed for $50, despite only having 396 pieces and two minifigures, which I think goes to show why it's probably so forgotten. 
The size of the ship as well doesn't really speak $50 to me, which I think also contributes to the set not being remembered very fondly. The next forgotten sets are actually three sets that all sort of come together, and these are the action battle sets from 2019. We got one called the Endor Assault, another one called the Hoth Generator Attack, and the last being the Echo Base Defense. Now I spoke about these sets in my LEGO Star Wars Gimmicks ranking video where I actually put these at the bottom of the list because they're just so forgettable. These sets were mainly aimed at kids with the play feature of shooting the targets and destroying the builds, but other than that they don't really offer much value for anyone other than maybe being a good army builder for both rebel and snow troopers, but then again you're much better off buying something like a battle packs or those minifigure packs. This obviously contributes to these sets being so forgettable as there's just no need for them anymore. It was an okay gimmick at the time, but there's just not a lot of substance here for fans. Another set that people seem to have forgotten about is the terrible Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle from The Force Awakens. Now back in 2015, this set was the first to be leaked from the movie and had everyone freaking out because of how cool it looked. This was of course until the actual movie came out and everyone realised that not only was the ship black, not grey, but the windshield should have also been red and that the wings did not splay out like they were supposed to. Obviously LEGO's design was based on an original concept art for the ship which explains why there are so many errors as LEGO takes a while to get all of their sets designed, built and produced. So Lucasfilm must have changed the design really late in development for the movie. As we know in 2019 LEGO redid this set and absolutely nailed it. However, it has now led to a lot of people forgetting about this one's existence. I honestly still really like the set as I have it, and Jangbricks made a really awesome video showing how you can customize the 2015 one to look more screen accurate, which I'll link below, and I've done to my own personal set, and it looks really great. You can see here on my own personal original uh, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle that there's actually a mod where you take off the red pieces and then put them in the front here to make the windshield look red, um, as well as you fiddle around with some of the Technic pins and stuff um, and that actually gets the wings to splay out on their side like that um, so that they uh, look a lot better than what it originally would when they were just straight up like this. So yeah, I'll link that video down below so you go check it out. It's, it's really, really helpful. You don't need to add any other parts or anything like that. You just use parts from this set already. So yeah, it's, it's really great. Another forgettable set is the AT Hauler from the Solo film. Now the actual ship itself I think here is what's really forgettable. It does look really nice with that white colour scheme and the brown frame underneath, but I just don't see anyone talking about this set anymore. The minifigure selection is actually really nice here with two of Dryden's guards, as well as the really awesome minifigure for Rio, who has those four arms which were exclusive to him just until recently. But otherwise this set is just kind of there. It hasn't gone up a lot in value since it released, but I do see this one going up sometime soon, but I probably am going to pick it up in the near future. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Leave a comment if you think any other sets are as forgettable as these ones, and make sure to subscribe to see more videos.